was looking through the mutual friends. I'm like, okay, a lot of these people that were mutual friends with go to the church I was going to at the time. So then I was like, I'll just accept him. I'll block him if he's weird. <laughs> Anytime I would be like, post something within like an hour, it would say that he hearted it. Like not just liked it, he hearted was, it. He loved God it. Thank God for the Facebook heart feature. I was, feature. Like, I was like, I love this. <laughs> did you guys wait yeah. for marriage? Yes. yes okay. Did. Yeah. Yes. That probably helped speed up the process to get married. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Back to the Fortitude Podcast, we're your hosts, Micah and Sarah, and we have the pleasure of having some guests on today. Woo-hoo. It is Justin, also known as Regal, right? Hi. Is that right? <laughs> yes. And Hannah. Woo-hoo. And they uh, are influencers. They have millions of followers across YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. Mm-hmm. Uh, millions and millions of, of followers, and they just have the most wholesome content and we we got the pleasure of meeting them a year ago, yeah, about just a year about. ago, right? Yeah, um, at a just conference. a year ago. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they were just so lovely, and so we're we're really looking forward to getting to know you and and kind of sharing your story and you know seeing where this goes. Absolutely. Yeah, we're excited. First Thank off, for where does Regal come from? Um, so I was well, I am a musician, and so my when I started that venture about twelve years ago. I um, didn't want to compete with all the other Justins that were out there, like Bieber, Timberlake, and so never I was heard like, of him. I need to, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and so I was like, I need to just kind of, you know, brand myself different. I thought, and um, so uh, Regal was the first thing that you know I felt had a great meaning behind it. It's it's royalty uh, specifically pertaining to a king, and the Bible calls you know us kings and stuff. So I thought that was a kind of a non christianese like you know uh name right and then um i tagged everything for i like my emails and my socials was all because regal is like a bunch of things you know there's like alcohol toilets movie theaters (laughs) nails and so like music was already taken like regal music so i was like okay what's a thing that could we like what's another name for music or something noise okay so i tagged everything regal noise for um all my socials and stuff and people just started introducing me as that regal noise and i was like well that's not what it was but then i was like you know what that has a ring to it so when you search that that's all you find and then uh going into you know marriage Mm -hmm. then um she wanted to do uh oh we wanted she wanted to start advertising you know my music and and was trying to find a unique way to do that she's like if we could and TikTok was blowing up. Yeah, this was during... So we started dating, like, right before COVID happened. And this is kind of when TikTok was, like, really, like, blowing up and stuff. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were promoting music on it. And um, he, you know, when we first met, shared just his dreams of wanting to be able to do music. And I was like, well, what if we, like, build up a, a following or a page where we can promote your music? Like, would you... Can we do that? And he was like, yeah. So then... We started, well, at first, I think it was just under my name. Yeah. And then we changed it to, once it started growing, we changed it to Hannah and Regal. And then that's just how it's been. Yeah. And so and that's that's where it comes from. Wow. Yeah. And so is that what started your social media journey? Yes. Yeah. So I was like, so at first I was posting just like embarrassing videos of him going crazy because <laughs> he... <laughs> And he was fine with it because, you know. He I just, mean, she would be like, is this all right? I'm like, sure, whatever. I didn't really yeah, think anything of it. Sure. I didn't he think was it just would be. like going nuts. And I did not think it would turn into anything, honestly. Yeah, when we were on our honeymoon is when it actually kind of all started. Um, we were in San Antonio and we had to like reroute because there was a hurricane. So we originally weren't even supposed to go to this place, but we got to this hotel and it had like this really cool jacuzzi bathtub thing and he was in there for a while and I had no I knew he was making a bath but I didn't know what he was doing (laughs) and he had made this like soap concoction and when I went in there we had it's one of our one of our first videos I think it's like yeah it was one of it's one of our first videos there was so many bubbles it was literally a bubble machine when I pressed the thing I took like an egg yolk and soap or something it was like a way 
they used to do baths, mm-hmm. like uh, bubble baths. They would take like an egg yolk and soap and it makes it like real, I don't know. Yeah. That's what I did. And this stuff, it the jacuzzi, it literally was like a bubble machine. You you would press it and it would go, <laughs> and the bubbles would just, it was up to the almost the ceiling. It was, it was crazy. Insane. Oh, wow. So I recorded it and I was like, what are you doing? And then he, after I recorded it, we watched it and it was funny. And he was like, you should post that on TikTok. And we hadn't found like really much success at all yet. So I was like, okay, I can just post it. And nothing happened for a few days. And then a few days later, all of a sudden I started getting like a ton of notifications on my phone. Mm. And we looked and the video started going viral. And then I was like, okay, so maybe like couple stuff is what we could, like the vein we could go down. And then the, the rest is history. Wow. <laughs> were, so were you, was your intention to do social media and have you been doing it for a while and then just didn't see traction until kind of that that video or or you started posting on TikTok? Or was this kind of just like you were doing it for fun, but you were more so pursuing uh, music and Hannah? What were you, you know, what were you? Uh, I was working as a nurse. Well, okay. I still have my license, but I was working as a nurse. I had never thought like social media would be something that. And I nor did do. I. I just thought like yeah. I would release a song one day and my life would change and then I wouldn't yeah. have to do anything else but make music. Well, that's not what happened. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's still yeah, time. No. There's still time. <laughs> there is. And I, I don't is. think that dream is dead. And I think that, I mean, we've had traction with that here mm-hmm. uh, a little, but um um, especially now we do have, uh, you know, a great following uh, and real supportive following. So um, and they love the stuff. We just haven't had that one that really, you know, I could, you know, take time off from For sure. being content creation into music. just music. So, yeah, it's still a dream. And I and and I'm, you know, excited to see that unfold. And I've been excited to, you know, see the growth in that but um Mm -hmm. yeah where that's where that all started from were you loving nursing and this just kind of like happened to be a a, a curveball that that god kind of threw at you or were you actively looking to kind of get out of that field and 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 go into this new route so i was i liked nursing but it can be challenging absolutely it is a challenging field and especially during covid it was hard Mm. and so i was feeling just kind of the stress of it and I always, my ultimate goal is always just to be able to, like, once I got married and had kids, was to be able to be a stay-at-home mom and raise my kids. And so that kind of was, like, the ultimate career, like, path I was hoping to go down. So um, I guess with the, once we got to the point where we're like, okay, we can do this full-time, I was like, okay, this is amazing because it was right before our son was born. And so it honestly was just an answer to prayer because it did allow me, because now we're both able to do this full-time from home and be home with our son. And so I I do, I did like being a nurse, but it was getting to the point where I was feeling a lot of burnout. And so I am happy that I was able to transition out of that. And so I'm not opposed to ever like going back to it again um but for this season of life i'm really happy with you know being content creators and being able to be with our son so that's beautiful absolutely such a blessing yeah, yeah it Do- honestly really really is we are so thankful we talk about it all the time yeah like, that was actually just- like because my dad growing up worked like shift work and stuff and so he he worked, you know, 70 some hours, you know, a week, 80 hours a week, sometimes even more. I don't know. He worked a lot, you know, and my mom had her own business later on. But, you know, when we were young, he it was hard for him to get, uh, you know, he had to really make an effort to uh, have time with us and stuff because of that. And um, one of my desires was to, you know, not have to deal with the the you just want to be present. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to be able to be present and yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it, it was actually brought up in marriage counseling because at the yeah. time, you know, she had a her job was paying more than mine, yeah. because I was working with my mom as a like a painter, interior designer, and you know, not making money much on music at all. And, uh, and so she's like, if if we needed to, would you, you know, would you, uh, you know, switch careers and be able to whatever and. You know, it was something that I'd gotten brought up in marriage counseling yeah. and stuff. And I was just like, I just, you know, I was like, I don't, I don't want to like, I mean, I would, I'd be willing to, I'd do whatever it takes, but I mean, like, that's not my desire. And yeah. so yeah. cool that, you know, God answered both of God our God answered both prayers. of our prayers. Cause yeah, now sure. we both, can, we work together and yeah. then we're able to be home with our son and now our, our soon to be daughter. So yeah. we're just, we're, we're very grateful. very grateful and 
God answered our prayer in a unique way. So mm-hmm. not the way or we desire it actually. <laughs> we didn't even I don't even think we, we prayed about it. God just like, you know, well, seek him first yeah. and he will give you the desires of your heart. Like it's not yeah. something that we were like, Oh God, just let us stay home with our son. Well, no, like, not in that. Like we didn't think that was gonna be like No, what but it, was it just happen. happened. It's just yeah. cool how good God was yeah. in that, you know, and answering that in a unique way. So yeah. yeah. It definitely it's like such an um a great depiction of how like we can have an idea for something that we want and then he takes it and turns it into way more than we could have ever imagined it could be. He like takes, he multiplies our efforts in ways that we could never even dream up. And we've, we've seen that in our life as well. And it's so cool when you get to, when you experience that firsthand and then you're like, wow, like the words that God promises on the page come to life and and bear fruit just like you know just 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 like it says when we when we lean into him so that's really powerful just probably won't happen on your time yeah yeah <laughs> and that's i think that, and, and that's the yeah. that's the most difficult thing i think for for human beings and that's where faith comes in is Absolutely. is just believing that um you know that that if you are doing the things that you need to do, which is like, or that are in your control. Mm-hmm. And then you surrender the rest of like the results. It's like, I, you, I've heard this, this quote, it's like, work like it's up to you, pray like it's up to God. And, and it's just, you oh, know, I you're like just that. moving forward as long as you are in step and you're, you're moving forward and doing what is in your control and you just release the the results and, and God will, will bless it. I think in, in, in abundance, um, it, and it may be in a very different way than you thought that abundance looks like for you in your head currently. That's like a really well modern way of saying Proverbs uh, 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 3, 5 through 6. That's, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding all your ways. Acknowledge him. He will make your path straight. Like that is probably like the like the easy way to understand that honestly yeah. i love that that's such a cool i've never heard that before that's awesome that's yeah really cool. um speaking of sorry to jump in speaking of faith is would love to hear about like kind of your guys's journey with that did you both grow up in faith how like you're is that something you came into more as adults like what's been what's been kind of like the path of your your testimony with your faith so yes i grew up in um a house where where there's faith we believed in jesus i was raised that way i feel like i didn't really make my faith really my own until i i mean like i always like i believed in god i believed um that you know Jesus died for me I would pray I'd read my bible we would go to church and but I felt like I never really had that like personal connection as strong as I should have until I just after I graduated high school and that's when I um I was kind of more just focused on boys and all that type of stuff in school and all that and so um after I graduated I had gone through um, a breakup and I was just like, God, I just like, I was really just wanting, it was still kind of like focused on boys. I'm like, I just want to meet my future husband, blah, blah. blah. And um, I was like, you know what? I need to get myself right though, because if I'm seeking this like type of person and I'm not even that, Mm -hmm. I need to like get my faith right. And so I started reading the Bible every day and read it through and it just kind of started a journey of me not even like focusing on that asset then but just like growing my faith and I feel like that's when I truly like gave my life to the Lord in a like a way that I had never had before so that is really what I feel like kick-started my journey of just truly dedicating my life to the Lord and then um a few years later we met (laughs) so. <laughs> and so I guess to piggyback my story, I mean, I did grow up going to church um, mm-hmm. and I was active in the church. Probably uh, I got active in the church because of my, my aunt led worship for the wor- the worship team there. And um, my buddy found out I could sing and he was just like, He's like, hey, you need to join the worship team with us. He was joining it or whatever. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. So I was going there and doing that. But I honestly never like opened, like I would go to church, but I never like read the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
And I never like, you know, I had a prayer life and I would pray and like, yeah, like one time I remember like a prayer I had too. I was like praying about this girl that I shouldn't be, I knew she wasn't a believer and I was like in ninth grade. Change her, Lord, change her. <laughs> well, not even that. I was just like, God, can I date this person? Can I be <laughs> with this person? And I never read the Bible really. And I opened up the Bible almost like treating it like a Ouija board almost, you know, just like, and just pointed, right? The first sentence, I it was like Proverbs 5, I think, the adulterous woman chapter. And it said, stay away from her. That was the first line I read. And I was like, and I just, I was like, huh, that was probably coincidence. And I, sh I shut the Bible and, you know, I dated this girl anyways, got my heart broken and uh. like, it was whatever. So that was like, that was kind of like the relationship I had. I didn't like, yeah. like I prayed and I had faith, but like when it came down to it, I, you know, I, it wasn't mature and, um, I wasn't committed to the word or his teachings and stuff. And so, um. But I had given my life to him. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, about uh, 10th grade is when I really, I joined a Bible study at my church. And so I'd been off and on in the worship team the whole time and stuff. And, but I, you know, gay, I stopped, God told me to stop hanging out with the friends I was hanging out with because we were getting into trouble and doing things, you know, like we shouldn't be doing. And um, I just started going to this Bible study. I started growing in my faith. I, you know, got rid of all my friends. I didn't like hang out with anybody really, except for a few people that I knew at church. And, um, that's when I like, so about 16 years old, I gave my life to like discipleship and it just like really changed my life. And people in my school, um, saw it. And we even had, a, you know, God used me to be able to reach some people in my school and our youth group started growing. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was really awesome to see just, um, you know, I was real probably in like real clicky and stuff before. And I cared about like, I always had like FOMO, you know, mm -hmm. and like was really always wanting to be like where people and the thing. And then I just totally God delivered me and healed me from all that. And I just didn't care. And I just wanted to be in his, honestly, just be in his presence and learn about him more. And the word, I would read my Bible at like lunch and stuff, and it just changed me. And so then um, after that, I did go to Christ for the Nations, and that was, you know, a great experience too. But that, so 16 uh, was when I gave my life to the Lord and yeah. how I found faith. And there's been ups and downs and stuff within that walk, yeah, of but course. that's when I really yeah. gave my life to the Lord. Has your faith ever been tested? And B, like what makes you so rooted in your faith? as to like why you believe what you believe. I, th I always find that to be kind of like uh, a really just interesting question because some people, you know, I feel like they believe what they believe because it's just what they were told, you know, as, as parents or, you know, or it's yeah. what they were brought up in, but they haven't really thought about like really why they do. And um, so I was just curious if, if you, yeah, w would care to share. That's a great that's a great question. I would say the personal experiences that I've had with the Lord, feeling his presence, um, you know, seeing his hand move in my life yeah. unexplainably just through. Right. It's no other explanation besides that. One. I just know that he's been guiding my life. Like there's just, you know, no explanation other than like his goodness and his yeah. hand over my life for in our life now. Yeah. But prior to meeting her, you know, there's been testing, you know, there's, and there's been Definitely. testings in our marriage and stuff too, but yeah. like, there's been testing prior to meeting her was, I mean, like women that I had in my life prior to her meeting her, that was a test, you know, God never gave me the peace to move forward in a relationship because I was praying the whole time, asking God, seeking him, you know, like waking up in the middle of the night, like just like praying, you know, just like, um, could not find peace. And, and because of that, like he led me out of situations and, and guided me to, you know, end up, I lived in Dallas for eight years and I ended up moving home and that's when I met her, mm -hmm. um, years later. Um, but that's, I don't know. I would just say just the personal experiences that I've had, you know, the yeah. guiding and the leading that I've had as I have sought him. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, the Bible, 
promises that if you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I, you know, it has never been done where someone has sought God with all their heart and they have not found him, you know? Mm. And I just feel like when, I just feel like that's what I, you know, practice in my life. And as I've done that, that promise has held true. And I know that there's been goodness that has been upon my life that, you know, has been unmerited and not deserved. And I know it's from him. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's just one of the things is just the, you know, personal experiences, Mm -hmm. you know, and then also just seeing his power move and, you know, um, and just crazy ways just with well like, even like just through our like story of things like so part of like when I was really laying down the whole like oh I just desire to be married all these things one thing I did to like in a way lay that down is I just started writing prayers for my future husband in a journal mm-hmm. and I was like you know what I am just gonna give this part of my life to the Lord and not just keep seeking this and so every day I would just write a prayer for my future husband and I did that for five years in all these journals and it was really cool because I gave them to him he didn't know I was doing that and on our wedding day that's what I gave to him as a gift is this box of all these journals and it was really cool going through the journals and him telling me about specific times in his life where like I would just like pray before I'd like pray for my future husband like what does my husband need God or like what what are some like areas in his life that I should pray for and like some of them were so specific to things that like he went through and it was just so cool and we did not know each other and we didn't know each other I had no idea like I had no idea she existed until, you yeah. know, like nine months before I got married, which yeah. was, you know, four and a half years ago. Well, actually, funny well, story, our families were the same church growing up, so we might have actually met somehow, but we didn't know that. Yeah, so and also have, I'm six but, and a half years older than her, so at the yeah. time it probably wouldn't, you know, God lined anyways. it up at the right time. So. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, um, that it was just kind of a cool testament of just, God moving when we didn't and I was at the time too like that was a a really like I said big desire of mine and like a really challenging part of my life I feel like just like going through all these relationships and just feeling like oh there's no one that is gonna like meet the standards of like the man of God that I desire and it was just really cool like looking back at all that and just seeing God's faithfulness through all these years when I didn't even know it and yeah, so yeah. I, that was a, so just cool. to wrap it up, I think just the guidance that God has given us, the yeah. personal experiences yeah. that he has, you know, shown us is, and you know, in, in that time, it hasn't been, you know, cupcakes and rainbows oh, the whole time, not. but through no. even, yeah, I would also say just not even just the good things, but even through the tragedies in life, having peace and having, you know, hope that, you know, um, you know, one of the things is, you know, like my brother uh, passed away when I was, uh, when I was 20, uh, it's almost, um, yeah, I think I'm about 22 mm. or, or so, it was 12 years ago. Um, and, you know, like, even in that, just having hope that I know that I'm going to see my brother again, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah. mm-hmm. that's one of the the big things about faith is that mm-hmm. the, this life is, is fickle, it's a grain of sand, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's fleeting, it's fleeting mm-hmm. and there is an eternity, and there is uh, ever after, and it's with God, and it's going to be with the people uh, that, you know... Um, we love and, and, and chose, you know, and, and choose him and stuff. And so yeah. we, and, and, you know, he's good and, and it's, and we're excited to, you know, just meet all of our loved ones again. And that's just one of the reasons too, is just having, you know, it wasn't like I was just full of joy when that thing happened. Yeah. But the of thing is that I can have peace knowing yes. that even though there's tragedy that, you know, the, the enemy, the the world um death where is your sting because like like even though at even though it hurts i know the truth and the truth is is that you know he believed and he had faith in the lord and um and he's i'm gonna see him again and so that's Mm -hmm. and that's a great thing to hold on to and so i mean there's there's many things through the highs through the through through the highs in life the lows in life Mm -hmm. it's you know having god carry you through that guide it and it says, you know, in Romans 8, 
28, uh, for we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And so he's just making, you know, and this is something I learned in that Bible study I was telling you about is that, that we went through the Romans road and it's just like, um, we just went all the way through Romans and, and he's making a beautiful quilt out of our life. So, I mean, there's like patches that may look like something that's you know, would be ugly by itself, but then it's weaved together in this beautiful mm. blanket. And that's what he's doing with our life. And so I, you know, it's not all, like I said, cupcakes and rainbows, mm. but you know, as we trust him, um, I, I just, you know, the personal experiences, him carrying us through him, his blessings, his goodness, and then the, just the forgiveness of just, you know, our sin too, just like the, you know, things that, we, you know, the sh guilt and shame and um, condemnation that we hold over ourselves, and that you know, I struggle with. She, everybody yeah. can struggle with self condemnation and just going back to the truth of just like you know, um, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and be able to feel that you know that even though you may condemn yourself because of your mess ups or whatever that. Um, that um, he doesn't condemn you. And there is a feeling and, that you get by understanding the truth and believing the truth. And, and mm -hmm. I would say those, all of that encompasses why, um, you know, we have a faith in the Lord. It wasn't just because, you know, honestly, my dad didn't really, he, he stopped going to church, you know, and he is still a believer, um, but it wasn't really necessarily like shoved down my throat, you know, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was like, you know, not go if I didn't want to type deal and just mm -hmm. finding that in my personal, those things in my personal life is like, man, God's real. He's in my life. He's active. He's not, he, he's alive. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's moving in, in my life as I press into him. So those are things. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, it's the lowest of times that we, that God, I see God the most or that I've seen God the most in, in my life. Yeah. The times when I've been really just struggling or dealing with, with a tragedy, um, that God has made his nearness the most apparent. Um, and I'm like, yes. I, I mean, I get the Bible says he's, you know, he's near to the brokenhearted and it, I, I think those moments really can strengthen our relationship and our faith with God. If we so choose to, to lean into him versus to blame him for, for those things. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, uh, you guys mentioned that you met and you were married nine months later. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Like Engaged how? six months later. Six months. Yeah. There you go. So what was like, was it immediate? Like we know, we know this, we're the person for each other. Like take me on, take me on the, that, that journey. So you start with like, it all started with him. So you start the beginning part because you. Well, I just knew I loved her. Like. Well, it's talking about like when we met. Cause you said that. Oh, like the first time we met? No, like when you first like saw me. So someone sent me a friend request. I was looking through this person's photos. Honestly, I was like, well, I mean, like I was, I was honestly at the end of my rope too. Like I was wanting <laughs> marriage. I was wanting a wife. I was almost 30. I just moved back with my mom. I'd been there for like, well, I mean, I'd been living with her for a couple years after I'd been, you know, a business salesman in Dallas you know, also pursuing my music career. And then like, I signed a bad record deal. And then mm. that and, and having to come home from a like, uh, what I was feeling was like, you know, not being successful at like a career that I set out to be like, I'm coming back in a Lambo. Type, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, not yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like, you know, like having these aspirations, and then coming back and being like, all right, I am making like a third of what I was making as the salesman and I had my own place and stuff. And now it's like, who's going to date me? Who's going to, who am I going to find sure. all this stuff? And anyways, I was just like looking through photos being like, man, maybe this person could be, I don't know. It's just like, I'm just like trying to figure it desperate. out. And I'm desperate. Right. And so I'm looking through and I found, a, I saw a picture of her though. And I was like, who is that? <laughs> I literally said it out loud. Like I said it, I was alone in my room. And I was like, who is that? Like I, and <laughs> it's funny because her, her, your mom, can I say that about your, your, oh. your mom, her mom is like, show me the photo, you know, like show me the photo of that. He saw Oh yeah. And then I showed, he's like, 
She's like, like, that's the photo? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and I was like, excuse me. I mean, like, honestly, but that, you know what? But that's what I just, I, it wasn't like, you know, I was just like, who is that? Like, yeah. it wasn't anything. It, it, she was just like a picture within the crowd. And I was like, who is that? Like, I just thought she was beautiful. And I, she was tagged in it. So I clicked on it and I was like, man, everything kind of looks I, like, I don't know. It looks like she's a believer. She's not like crazy posting things that like seem, I was like, the, the, it seems to be, I don't know. And I added her and I went out into the kitchen and I was like, mom, I think I just found my wife. And I was just like, you know, joking, <laughs> kind of hoping, but that was like. That and she, that's when we found, well, that's when he found out that our families had like gone to church, went together when I was younger. Cause yeah. she was like, Oh, like I know her grandma. Yeah. I think I made a cake for her grandma and I made a cake for an uncle or something. And I was just like, Oh, and they're like, Oh, their parents used to go to new life. I was like, Oh, so that's the, that's a church I went got to it. growing up. I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> got a little... So, so, but I didn't just want to like, ru- I didn't want to message her or anything. Long story short, I, she had checked in like to a concert like a month and a half later. I, yeah. And I was just like, and he had been like, so I wasn't going to accept this friend request because I did not know who he was. And I was like, <laughs> mm, so I was really about to delete it. But then I'm like, let me just look. And we had a bunch of mutual she friends. She was interested. <laughs> that time I was not. Um, so I, <laughs> I was looking through the mutual friends. And I'm like, okay, a lot of these people that were mutual friends go to the church I was going to at the time. And I'm like, maybe he goes to like my church and I haven't met him. So then I was like, I'll just accept him. I'll block him if he's weird. And <laughs> Anytime I would be like post something or tag in something, I didn't really post that much on social media at the time. But within like an hour, it would say that he hearted it, like not just liked it, he hearted was, it. He thank loved it. Thank God for the Facebook heart and I feature. Was like, I was like, I love this. This is I was nice. Like, oh. Hi, and so I was getting a little like, mm, I don't know, but I was also like really intrigued because like I had said he'd seen he'd done music and I listened to him like, wow, he's really good. But I was also still kind of like, mm, I don't really know. So then I checked in that I was going to like a Colton Dixon concert um, at a local like cop- coffee shop. It was a small um, concert, and that's he when saw I that. saw that she checked in. There was a concert notification, and I was just like, okay. I've been walking around town hoping I'd run into her because I figure (laughs) it'd be weird to message her since I just don't know her. Like she said she was going to be there via like her checking in. I'm like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to know some people that are there probably and I'm going. So when I met her, I did like uh, my heart literally skipped like it like jumped in my uh, chest when she walked through the door. I introduced myself later. Yeah. The question was like, when did we know? So yes, yeah, sorry, so, that was just a little bit of the backstory. no. I love backstory. I love the backstory. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. backstory. <laughs> Back. So we yeah. dated. We went on a date like a week after, uh, and I because I messaged her then. Yeah. And then like it was thirteen days after. I think. It, okay, wait. I was it. We knew, well, you said that you had almost... Yeah, I don't know. I was really... Because I was trying to be real protected. I hadn't dated anyone in years. And I just, like, told God. I was just like, I don't want... The next person, I am not going to disciple. I am not going to, you know, missionary date. They need to (laughs) do... I'm not going to do this anymore. And he had steered me away, even in that time, from things. And I... and. So when I, I was trying not to, I was trying to even be slower paced too, you know, and um, not say like, I love you right away because I was just like, I don't want to rush this. Mm-hmm. I want this to be whatever. And so yeah. she prayed over me one night and we, cause I think we were, it was 10. I can't off the top of my head. It was either 10 days or like 13 days after we had like made it official that we were dating. And yeah, I, she prayed something and we had it. There was, and this is just another thing to attest of like why I have faith in God, because yeah. I, we had this thing at my church where it was like, um, it was called, it's called the presbytery. They, they have that in like Ephesians. They talk about it where they gather like the elders in the church and they, you know, will speak prophetic words, um, you know, over, uh, people like I see God, you know, doing this or, you know, just encouragement, words of knowledge type deal. And um, they had these people come in that did not know me, that did not know my life. And they prayed over me. And one of the things that the person said was God broke the mold when he made you. And this guy was praying over me and stuff. And I was just like, wow. I mean, it was a powerful thing. She was praying over me and she was just like, God, you just broke the mold when you made 
Justin, and I just started crying. It was like the same feeling. It was just the, it was the exact same thing that had been spoken over me yeah. years ago. Mm. And she just praying it over me in her entryway and was just like, just confirming like this girl is like in touch with God, you know, yeah, too. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and I was just like, I, I just couldn't hold it in. I was just like, I, I love you. <laughs> it's like, I love you. I'm sorry. I love like, you. I Let's get married. Back, like, the first two dates. And I was like, this is way soon. And I don't want it, but I was like, I love you. And um, and then I was like. I'm crying a little of tears of joy just thinking about it. It was really awesome. It was a real powerful moment. Yeah, that's yeah, great. And then I, after our first day, honestly, like I got in. Because I was going to cancel our first date because I was really nervous. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Like, I hadn't dated someone in a while. And I was like, maybe I can just cancel. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to go. And actually, well, I don't want to keep backtracking. Sorry. But the night before the concert that I met him, I was walking up the stairs. And I felt like God was speaking to me. And I heard, like, a voice um saying you're gonna meet your future husband tonight and i was like whatever like wow. i'm so you're nice like to stop is that my this. mind or is that yeah, is it, yeah, is it actually yeah, god yeah. speaking to me am i just like hopeful i'm like i'm not gonna think about that yeah. in this night i met him so that also is really cool but anyways after our first date it went so well and i was just like wow like I got in my car after and I was like, I think I love this boy. And so when he had told me that he um, loved me, I was like, I have loved you since our first date. So yeah. it was really cool oh, because nice. it was just like such a powerful moment. And honestly, shortly after that, we started talking about getting married. Yeah, so, <laughs> so. that was a long thing. Sorry, Sorry but I know, kind of that's, that's, I think we started really realizing like, because we, early on we started praying through all of it. And I mm-hmm. think just we were really serious about, you know, marriage as mm-hmm. far as that being the option. And I told yeah. her that initially, I was like, you know, I started talking to her about that, like pretty soon was just like, you know, I'm interested in, in marriage, mm-hmm. not let's saying that you are the person, but that is my intent at the end of this is mm-hmm. that, you know, I don't want to waste your time. Mm-hmm. And also just, I'm intentional with you. I want you to know that I, that's my intention. So that is uh kind of yeah and then that. so then basically so that was like within the first month all that happened <laughs> and so then we're like all right well <laughs> but so and i mean like there was still like time you know but did you guys wait yeah. for marriage yes yes, yes. we did yes yep. for it became, that probably helped yeah. speed up the process to get married <laughs> yeah right yeah um so I, I will say like we you know uh, yes, we we were perfect and we you know probably pushed we did push boundaries yes. that we probably shouldn't Should have, have but yeah um, all the loopholes like, we, we we did yeah. all that too yeah. <laughs> yeah but as far as like you know you know sex before marriage we did not uh, yeah, and we that was you know something that was important to both of us yeah. Um, yeah. and was uh, you know you know in the in in a dating scenario when you are you like serious and stuff too not even just serious i mean just in a dating scenario in general sorry yeah. just like it's just hard to not do that anyways but yeah. you know um uh we that was something that we had talked about it's something yeah. we wanted and we did make it to the finish line for that purpose which was great <laughs> and, um, and you made it to the finish line a couple times because you're about to have your second kid yeah. right <laughs> And so we've been making it a finish line ever after. So that's great. Yeah. yeah that's Which great. Hannah, you're like, what, three weeks out from 40? My due date is about two and a half weeks away. We'll see when she comes. But yeah, she's going to be here very Any long. day. Any she, day. I've been having. The doctor said she, the, that she is the down. Today. Like her head. Yeah. She's like, the, I mean, pretty much. Yeah. He's like, like if you start having contractions five minutes apart, just come in. Wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, this baby is ready. Could happen so. right now. Have, has uh, uh, Sarah had Braxton? hicks at all i haven't nothing yet Mm-mm. okay i didn't really have it at all my first pregnancy but this with this one it's been <laughs> every pregnancy is so different but everyone this is. one I've she had. has is. just been moving and giving her she a lot is. of stuff did you so. say braxton yeah. hicks but, yeah braxton hicks Bra- i'm like is this a doctor who's Bra- <laughs> who's braxton hicks <laughs> Sorry. he is the highest rank yeah. oh you've had him 
Um, yeah. it's like, it's like, <laughs> no, it's like, like contractions, but you're not, you're not actually going into labor oh, yet. Got yeah. it. And, okay. Yeah. Your body's just For both of your pregnancies yeah. were, uh, I, I'm assuming were, they, they were both planned or, or maybe not. I, I don't know. Yeah. They were both of them. Yeah. Planned. Both yeah. were planned. She yeah. was wanting like children, like ASAP. Pretty ASAP. <laughs> honestly, I was like, just give it. T- I, I just want like two years really is kind of what I was and saying. Which is kind of crazy because our son was born two days before our two year wedding anniversary. So I so told it was her two like years. Two years on the dot. <laughs> so um, just because I wanted time with us. and, and Yeah, um, which was I'm yeah. really glad that we did wait and just have that time with us because you know once you have kids like you know they're it's, it's a season you can't you come too. back from yeah and um we just enjoyed that season yeah. but we are enjoying this one and yeah yeah and we talked about this before it's just mm-hmm. you know you gotta just enjoying the seasons that you're in you know mm-hmm. so yep. um, you're enjoying parenting parenthood because it's, yes, it's it's good I, to hear that because i mean naturally life like naturally having a kid is going to alter your life it just ultimately mm-hmm. it just and is. Your, your priorities like your priorities are going to shift absolutely your finances yeah. are going to like it's everything is going to shift everything and is. and and some people see that as like a death sentence uh and i know that it's a dramatic it, it's not quite that much but people no some it, people in do. society I mean, they, they're like Oh, your life's done. You know, basically, yeah. once yeah. you like, oh, you're pregnant. Oh, okay. Well, uh, enjoy it while it lasts, kind of a thing. And it, I just, I, it's always refreshing to see uh, couples and young couples that are having kids and and not not shying away and saying like everything's butterflies and rainbows, but actually, it, uh, like. Exp- uh, expressing how it's such an honor and a beauty beautiful thing to do it yeah. and you know there are people that they not, not everybody has the privilege of first off having kids and yeah. that yep. in itself yeah. uh is such a is such a blessing when that can happen i mean you know we went through our the, the first one uh not working out and so it's like well where we feel just like even more grateful for um, Absolutely. this one and how everything is going healthy and, uh, every, every doctor's appointment is just like, uh, thank you. Like, thank you, God, um, that, Absolutely. that things are going, um, well. And cause mm-hmm. you know, it's just things happen. And, Absolutely. um, and so and, and I, it's always refreshing to hear people talk. talk about parenting yeah. and not so a, we, not in a, like a, your life is over kind of way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it is such a blessing. I love being a mom, and I know you love being a dad. Like, it is – obviously, yes, like, you're not just single and can do whatever you want all the time, but, like, I would not trade being a mom to him and this little girl for anything. Absolutely. Like, it is, and it I is just, my favorite thing. Honestly. And I just want to say, dude, you guys are – uh, Michael, you're going to be such a good dad. Yes. Like I'm so excited to see you be a father. And Sarah, you're going to be such a great mom. You guys are going to be such great parents. I'm so excited to see you guys just love on this kid and just, you know, I'm I'm just, you know, wanting to encourage you guys. You guys yeah. you guys have everything in you to just raise a beautiful, great child and I just can I don't know the joy that you guys. I'm just excited. I'm just excited for you guys are going to be awesome. So thank you. Thank that, you. That means a lot. Yeah, we're definitely very, very excited. And I think it is the more people we talk to that have kids. It's like mm-hmm. just because you have kids doesn't mean that like if you still have personal dreams for your life, it doesn't mean that those have to go away like because completely. you because you no. have kids. You know, and that's yeah. that's something that I love hearing from people where it's like, yeah, obviously like he was saying priorities change, but we can still, you can still figure out how to pursue those things that God has put in you that are for you, that are, that are your mm-hmm. gifts alongside the privilege of being a mom and, and being a dad. Yep. And a part Most of that definitely. too is like, honestly, a part of the walk of faith is, you know, dying to ourselves too. And mm-hmm. so there's, there's the giving of yourself to your child, to your spouse and having, you know, God be the fulfillment and bringing, I mean, it's not saying you don't put effort into those things at all, mm-hmm. but giving, you know, there's, you know, like 
I don't get all the time I want in the world necessarily to work on like the music I need would love to work mm -hmm. on or but you know what I've created some great stuff and, and honestly our son is his biggest fan yeah like, he has like he always wants to listen to Dada's music and like he knows like so and sweet. he's not being too and he knows like a lot of words to it and like I think that's so special like it is. even if no one else heard this song like our son loves it absolutely and that is just is so special yeah and so it's just like letting you know allowing like allowing you to just uh, uh, just serve and yeah. and allowing Aww. god to you know bless things and do mm -hmm. things and stuff I, I mean like just like with what we were talking about earlier with um our just with um what was it wanting our desires to be home with our son you know mm -hmm. like that happened like right when he was born type deal yeah. it wasn't you know something like oh we are, we're all prepared you know yeah, like yeah. everything's set up like we know that we're going to be able that we had no idea you yeah, know and we just then kind of i just didn't go back from maternity leave the whole time we're kind of like uh, i don't know like and they were like you know what i think this is what this 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 is what God wants in this season. And yeah. so we took the plunge and yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, it's just I I think it is um as you you know, serve and love and do these things. And then, you know, I think, I don't know, God just blesses your efforts, you know, it's mm -hmm. just, it's cool. So yeah, you don't have to give up on everything. It's oh, not, you know, not. I mean, like we've traveled so much with our son. Yeah. Like, he has gone so many places and it's so fun, like seeing it through his eyes too. And just like the simple things that maybe we, like we don't get excited about, but seeing him get excited about like mm -hmm. that is like when we took him to the beach for the first time. He was just like, <laughs> so excited and it was so cute and it was like yeah it just makes you really appreciate the little things too mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm sure you you kind of start to see the world a little bit through a child's eyes even even if yeah. it i mean I, I find myself and that even when i see babies and when they're just like out out in in life and experiencing new things like just thinking about how they are literally experiencing everything for the first time time like n everything yeah. is brand new and they're just so curious and like mm -hmm. i think it's there's something to kind of glean from that too mm -hmm. of just being like yeah, that absolutely. we could use in our own life as adults yeah. of just staying mm -hmm. more present and and like looking around our environment and just exp and and being uh just i don't know more curious and more um grateful for what's happening just around us because it, 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 we can I don't know when it when the conscience uh, like the consciousness or or the or, or the 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 thing flips from okay I, I'm like a kid and I'm just like enjoying life and to uh, now I have to I have to worry about my future yeah, and my finances and responsibility right. and everything yeah. it all it just yeah. kind of flips yeah. and then we yeah. just totally negate and I think forget about that childlikeness that's in us and it's like you watch a a, a Pixar movie or something that, you know, is for kids and you're tearing up and you're crying, I think because we all kind of have that in us that we, mm -hmm. like you watch Inside Out or, or something like that. And it kind of brings out this, uh, this, this lost kid and, and everybody has different lives too. So like maybe, maybe the childhood wasn't great. And that it brings up yeah. like not, not great things, or maybe your childhood was really great. And, um, you know, your life isn't at the moment and you're just thinking back on, man, like I was so like happy. I, I don't know. I'm kind of tangenty now, but I, it just is an oh, interesting I thing to I think totally about. I totally understand that. Yeah. Like our son, like, like, and he just, see, he's so joyful and about like just right. the tiniest like little things and like he just, little things just make him happy and it just kind of makes you like take a step back and be like, wow, like life doesn't have to be like as hard or like the mindset just changes like mm -hmm. you know like it just makes you have more of appreciation for things like he finds like the littlest things like that just make him smile and laugh and it like then it makes us smile and laugh yeah like, i don't know it's just like so much more simple and innocent and it just makes you just kind of forget about all this stuff going on sometimes i think that it also like is a super good reflection of god's like you know he He's, 
he's really good at just show, like showing us in life by the design that has been created, his relationship with us, yeah. you know, cause he is the father. And yeah. so as a parent too, I would also add like, that is another way that I know, like have faith in God is cause yeah. I've learned a lot from just trying to parent, you know, parenting my son, right, you right. know, the love it takes, the time, the yeah. sacrifice, and just also even... It's just God's love for us. Yes, like, the joy I like, get seeing him, and then I'll, yeah. I've, <laughs> I've, like, tried to... He's at a stage where we are, you know, having to uh, correct and things like that as far as, like, hey, don't do this, you know, whatever, because mm-hmm. he's, you know... Just in the t- testing the boundary phase. Testing the boundary <laughs> phase. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say some stuff sometimes, and then I'm just like thinking, I'm like, man, like I feel God saying that to me sometimes yeah. with like my attitudes mm. and the oh, things. Yeah. Like, but I'm just telling my kid this, and I'm like, mm-hmm. fudge, God, like <laughs> teaching me something through what I'm telling this kid. Like, yeah. and then I'm, yeah. So it's so. it's uh it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's beautiful. beautiful. What was did, how? How was the transition for you guys from it being just you to, to becoming parents? Like, was that hard on your relationship at all? Was mm-hmm. it an easy transition for you? What what was what was that like? It was not easy. <laughs> yeah, it was not easy. It was definitely. I feel so like- she came out of. We had an emergency C section, and yeah. um, he was you know uh, very small. Very small. Mm-hmm. So he had to eat like all the time. He's four pounds, 13 ounces when he was born, oh. and then four pounds, 11 ounces when we took him home, I believe. I think he was, or 10 ounces. Yeah, four pounds, somewhere. Yeah. He lost a few ounces. So he was healthy and stuff, but because of his weight, he needed to eat like eight times a day, and he was calling. Yeah, he was having to eat every two hours. Yes. So it was yeah. like a lot. He yeah. was eating a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so... And I was really sick after um, my C-section. I... I just think I had a lot of antibiotics and I was like had an epidural and then anesthesia and my body just gone through a lot of trauma and so I was really sick after I for like two weeks I was just nauseous and throwing up and then we had our son who um we were having some breastfeeding issues and he was also experiencing like colic um and so, so it was a very we didn't stressful sleep. time <laughs> well she got a little more sleep but that was only because like I he was stepping up. I, I had to step up because rest. she had just had a surgery and needed to yeah. recover. So it's yeah. not like they'd be like, "Hey, get back in here," you know. Like she needed <laughs> get back in the game. <laughs> Come on, you know. <laughs> like she really needed that to heal, and I knew that. And so, mm-hmm. like, even still, though she was involved, and she, that like just we were not sleeping a lot because of yeah. that reason. And so. When you're low in sleep, I got my you know, blood pressure get... tested, and he was like on the verge of like high blood pressure. I was like a 145 yeah. over something. It was, like, and okay. I got a kidney stone like shortly after. So we were like, we were having all sorts of stuff. So the first two months on. were very difficult. They're very rough. But wise, God and... brought us through it, yeah. and yeah. it eventually subsided. You survived, and, and now you're through. Yes, we survived. We made through, and I feel like it's made us a lot. Closer Absolutely, so we ways. worked. Yeah, because and we like, were able to work. We through. really were like teammates. Yeah, in that time and we it really to. did. Like, oh, this is really hard, and it did cause strain. <laughs> I, I, I did. I, did, I, I even I broke down one time. Like, sure. I mean, there was many times I was on the verge of breaking down, but I mean, like, there was one time I was just sitting there, <laughs> like, oh, and she's just like, and I just, I don't do that, you know. No. I mean, only, you know, weekly. But, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> yeah, right, right. But she just, I remember being on the, the I was just frustrated because he was just crying and he was like colicky, so he was gassy and like we couldn't like, we were doing like everything in the book mm-hmm. to just try to relieve, relieve him and it was just so frustrating and just not only just because I wanted him to be better, but also it was just like, it's just a very difficult season. Yeah. I was getting like an hour and a half of sleep for like a month and a half. Like yeah. that was sure. like... Um, and I just remember Hannah just being like, it's okay. Like, you know, like, and I was like, <laughs> and it was times I got to do that too with her. But I mean, like I, yeah, yeah it was, no, it was we, difficult. So not the easiest, but God's grace was sufficient. Yes. We and made we it, through it through it. And, and he's a, you know, doesn't have those. those yeah, I know. Anymore, he's so. a happy, healthy little boy. And I definitely think, you know, at the time it was hard, but it definitely like made us closer and made us work together. A this lot better. too shall pass. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My, my motto, yep. anytime, anytime it's like a, a really hard season, it's, it's basically two words. It's for now. 
this is like <laughs> yeah. this for now, but mm-hmm. everything has an end. There's an end to yeah. even really good seasons. Mm-hmm. So it's like yeah. you can you can use that as whether it's and it's all saying the same thing. This too shall pass or uh, everything like this is only temporary uh, for yeah. now. Whether whatever that is, that just really gives me peace in whatever because it's, yeah. it's true. You just see the history of life where uh, in the in the in the really hard seasons. I'm sure you, your brother passing had to have been a just a monumental time in your life. And I'm sure it It just totally shifted a lot of things, right? Whether it's like, uh, like about your faith or it made me like, cause his, I had to overcome, you know, depression and stuff because Mm. like that was, I mean, he, his passing was a a suicide and, um, it was, you know, really difficult to, go through and so we were very close when we were younger not so much as we got older and we had some you know brotherly tension there there was and then towards the yeah towards the end of his life it was just we did I did find that's why it was so good I did know I know that me and him were at peace and stuff it was you know I had peace and it gave me much closure to know that we were good on good terms before his passing but, um, you know, him passing was like, you know, well, why don't you do it? You know, you know, he, you know, when times were difficult, I was in another state and sure. stuff. It was just, there was a lot of lies and I was, you know, not being successful at the, I mean, like wasn't seeing, I was having gradual success, but it wasn't how I pictured it in my life. And so having the, the like the perspective of like, like I'm a failure or like this isn't, you know, exactly how I thought it should be. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to overcome, you know, like depression and those thoughts of, of that. And, um, so it was very difficult and that his passing did trigger things like that. So, um, I can imagine. Did, did your, did that rock your faith? Like was your faith, did you feel like you were angry at God during that? And, uh, or, or I guess like, yeah, what was like, because something like that could happen and and it it's very easy to be like like why did you let that happen kind of a thing absolutely i um there was i would great question fair question and i would honestly say no yeah. i did not get angry at god i you know i was we had just so much honestly, peace and confirmation of things that, you know, it just gave me, it was, it just gave me a lot of peace about everything. It gave me like, I mean, and God even used the, his passing to, um, there was people that got, you know, brought to the Lord through his passing. Like he used that tragic scenario to reach people that were like, did not have faith and like then became believers in Jesus. Like there's this couple that had come over to my parents' house saying that they had been hearing like, you know, what they thought was like Jason or somebody talking to them, you know, my brother, Jason. And they're like, they're saying like, and it so brought this couple to my parents' doorstep. And then my parents were like, yeah, that's not, that's not Jason. That's God. And they got led to the Lord because of his passing. So it was just like, you know, because it it was, you know, and so there was, yes, it was um, tragic, but I had, God gave me just this, I don't know, just a peace. You know, I know I'm going to see him again. I, you know, I know it wasn't. How'd you get through the depression? And I, I can't, I mean, personally, I can't imagine. I mean, I had an uncle who, uh, took his life and that was, that's like, it's not, it's not the same as, as a brother, but like it was. And so I can't imagine, you know, that same scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and And, so what did you do there? Like, was it therapy counseling or was it just kind of, I would say I had, so at the time I was dealing with all that stuff, I had, you know, I went to, uh, uh, a minute mentor in your life. Well, I had a, Mm. yeah, I had a mentor. Um, and he, he did play a role, but I would say um, my mentor did play a role because I eventually did tell him that I was having these thoughts and stuff like that. But I think um, 
that was kind of like towards that was that actually was a big part because I started going back to being involved with like a small group with him again. So that did actually play a big role. As, but I would also say at the time that the like the baby steps that I took to overcome that is I went to a ministry school and a lot of my friends were from that school. So I had some close friends that were also believers in the faith and I confided in them and told them that, hey, these are the thoughts I'm having. You know, I'm and so my roommate at the time, actually, he was he would just like just question. He kept me accountable and he was just like, yo, have you been thinking this? Like he was very militant of like challenging me and like you need to talk about this with me. And um, it's a good friend because I told him he's like, I'm going to keep you accountable. You know, like I'm not going to let you do that or I'm not going to let you have these thoughts alone. And we're going to, you know, and so whenever I, you know, he would just periodically just check in like because he would see her like he would see me just like staring off like in, you know, just in my head. And he's just like, yo, what's going on? Are you having those thoughts? You know, and then so just being accountable with him. Um, and then I told another friend and he, you know, like I told him these thoughts I was having because of, you know, that I was I having suicidal thoughts and mm -hmm. stuff. And he's just like, and told him because he told him, you know, because of the music and stuff too, was also was getting on me and stuff. And he's just like, yo, I'm coming over right now. And he's like a really good, he worked for like Eminem and stuff like making beats. And cool. he was like in, in the industry working with other people um big bands and stuff and uh he came over and like we made a beat and stuff and he recorded with me and um just like show me how to make beats and stuff and that it just good friends actively being in my life being open with those friends having my mentor you know confiding in those people you know and obviously praying and talking to god through it yeah. you know like that was a big thing so i mean just being accountable to friends, praying through it, that, and, you know, and having that, those, those are, that's how I got over it. And I, you know, and then eventually too, I, I promised my mom that that would never be a thing. So I, yeah, like, yeah, I, I can uh, imagine. Like, I, you know, confided in my mom too and told her that those were the thoughts. So, yeah. Um, wow. That's really powerful. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing all that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah. and, and being open about that. Also says a lot about, you and like your desire to heal from what you were going through and kind right. of get, get rid of those lies because you asked yeah. your friends for help and accountability. And yeah. so in so many situations, like people just don't do that for, you know, because the lies prevent them from thinking that their friends are going to care or be willing to do that for them. When, yeah. when so many people have people in their corner who would be willing to do that, um, they just don't don't absolutely. believe that to be true. So I think that's a really powerful testimony. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, absolutely. It was. I mean, it was a difficult season. That was. Yeah, that was like probably. It was probably the first like probably the first year after my brother passed is when I dealt with that stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, for sure. And that's honestly a lot of times when things like that happen with other people that have experienced a similar thing. A lot of times, like you know. Um, though i mean it that that lie just triggers down to the people close and you know other tragedy can happen because they believe that or you know it's hopeless it's and it's such a slippery slope because mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. then and then it, it gets wrapped in your identity and then you start to look for evidence as to why you're a whatever fill in the blank loser a yep. you know and, and so then uh, a hit your song doesn't you know take off and, and you're like yep. i'm a failure and then you're just yeah. looking for evidence to just basically um, justify confirm. that and mm -hmm. confirm that thought. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it's and it, the, I I, believe, I think the only way to really get around that is either you're you're really good at capturing your thoughts yeah, and like taking your thoughts captive and, mm -hmm. and like speaking against the lie, or you have counseling or somebody that you can speak to that can speak into you mm -hmm. uh, the truth. Yeah. It definitely took. I mean, like. I've totally been, you know, that is, I mean, that has never been an option for many, many years at all. Um, and don't have that at all. Been totally healed, totally set free from that. But it was just, yeah, like, like I was saying, just accountability with close friends and, um, yeah. And then also being proactive, like, like, like you said, my mentor, 
I, once I finally, I had those friends and stuff in my life. And then once I really confided in my mentor, he's like, you know, I started going to a small group again and not just, you know, not, not just have that accountability, but also like getting in the word, worshiping with people, like getting in God's presence with people that, you know, also believe in the Lord and Mm -hmm. stuff, people that, you know, like are discovering the Lord and stuff too, but just like getting an atmosphere and an environment where it's like you're getting, you know, filled up with, with more of him and not like all the lies and your own thoughts and stuff like that. Um, it was now I think that you don't necessarily like, I think that God can speak to you right then and there individually. And it doesn't need to be the huge altar call. It doesn't need to be like the big environment Mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but I think that if God's placed these people in your life for, and that's how he, you know, used that scenario. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was, you know, a progress and a progression. And I did eventually have like a moment where I was like completely just didn't bother me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, I I mean, that's a beautiful story. And, Mm -hmm. um, and you know, thank you for, thanks for everything you guys shared. And, uh, it was, you know, I, we've taken up too much of your time. You have, I, you need to get sleep. It's uh, yeah. it's eleven forty five p.m. Dude, you guys are an hour ahead, so oh, you need. Yeah. It's ten forty five for you. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah. But no, I we appreciate um, everything you guys shared, and and you know, um, you guys have such a powerful story, and uh, and you guys are just crushing it. So just keep it up.